Hey guys, how's it going? Today is an exciting day. We are working on the cold frames in front of the Hartley. There it is looking absolutely beautiful. I do have the design nailed down for around it. We just have a lot of prep work as far as that goes. But today's goal is to get these cold frames all set up and planted, hopefully. So what that will entail is running the preliminary drip system, filling them up and getting them planted. It doesn't seem like a whole lot. It seems like three pretty easy steps, but these cold frames are kind of big. I think the filling up part will take us a little while. So two cold frames, one on either side. We'll put the dimensions on the screen. They are deep though. Take a look in here. They do go down to native soil. So we should have pretty easy time with drainage. There are a couple of different sleeves that have been installed. So in each cold frame, so this one on the east side and the other one on the west side, we had a little PVC sleeve installed. So it goes all the way out through here. And the idea of putting that in was so that we could run drip tubing underneath the soil outside and then pop it up on the inside. That way, I mean, there's really no other way to get a drip system in there unless we put it up over the side and that would look bad and it would also make it to where we couldn't close the lids. And then there's also a sleeve right here. So that one right there will allow air exchange from inside the greenhouse into here. So early on in the season, when it's warmer on the inside, it will push some warm air in here and just keep these naturally warmer. And then on this side, <laughs> hey Russell, careful. <laughs> Aaron already dug the hole over here to expose the sleeve which thankfully it's not super deep, but that will allow us to hide everything. And we're gonna set the cold frames up eventually uh, to their own zone so that those will water separately from everything else. We just have a lot of irrigation stuff that's gonna be moving around out here so that it won't actually be hooked up to water for a while yet, but at least we'll have access to it and I can run the drip uh, tubing on top of the soil surface so that we're kind of ready to go as soon as we do have water access. And all of the water for this area, you can see it's kind of a mess back here. This is where the pergola pad was. And then <laughs> I just have a menagerie of things here. And I think what we're gonna do is separate it. We're gonna have half of it tucked in way over here by the snowball bush with a frost-free hydrant. And then this half that controls more of the chicken coop area will be up in this area somewhere. And that way uh, this area will be clear and we can plant it and it's all gonna be torn up anyway. So we figure it's a good time to kind of redirect and figure things out. We also have to run a trench back into this garden. We'll go over all that later. Aaron's got the tubing. This should go pretty quick actually, this, this part. <laughs> this will be the easiest part. Yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> Drip so, is done. I feel like we should um, not have any connections down here because we, we could put an elbow and have it come straight up, but I feel like it'd be better just to have one piece of pipe uh -huh. and just have it maybe like loop up and, and come up over on this side. So that all of our connections are up ab above where we can easily access them if right. there's any leaks. I think that's a good idea. So maybe we can just have it, you know, sitting in here and then the connection can be like right here in the corner or something uh -huh. like that, or in the back, uh -huh. whatever you think. I think that's a good idea. And so then we'll just leave a length of this sticking out until I, we can hook it up. We're going to end up having a water box here mm -hmm. and an electrical box as well. So we'll just have a little loop of tubing over here, roll of tubing. Well, that's handy. And just stick them like right that there for a little bit. <laughs> I want to dig. Okay. <laughs> well, that was easy. I think this hole was easier to dig out. I feel like I didn't have to go as deep, which I didn't. <laughs> you can see the soil level on this side, the, the ground does go down a lot further than it is on the other side. I didn't realize how much of a slope. Um, I mean, it's not huge, but it's definitely a slope from that side down to this side. Uh, but we've got extra black tubing here, comes through the sleeve and goes through the bottom of the cold frame and pops up right over here. So in terms of filling this thing up, we've got the air hole right there. We've got the lids right here. So we want to put the level at a point where we still have the flexibility of having 
some things with height. I mean, so I'm thinking like maybe three bricks up, maybe four is how full will actually fill it. It's still pretty deep though. So cold frames are typically used a couple of different ways. The first way is as a holding spot for things that you have started or kept in a warm greenhouse uh, and you want to get them ready to go outside, but you need kind of that interim space, that gradual area where you can help harden your stuff off. Um, so you can set them in a cold frame and then you have the ability to open and close the lids, expose them to more of the elements outside, but still offer them some protection as well until they're strong enough to withstand outside elements, uh, or you can plant straight in them, which is I think what we're gonna do today. In fact, I need to have either way, if I'm gonna be using it to um, harden things off or use it to plant in, I need to fill them up with something and get that level brought up to a point where I can reach it. So with a planting area this deep, even if we go like three bricks up or four bricks up, we're dealing with like a foot down there and probably another two feet up above where that ledge is. That's a lot of area to fill with raised bed mix, especially because we've got two of them to fill. So we're actually going to use some of our wood, our firewood, to layer at the bottom and take up some of the space. We're kind of going with the Hugel culture method of composting, essentially, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's all about layering. So usually there's bigger things at the bottom, bigger logs, and then branches, and smaller things, and so on and so forth, and then that pile just kind of sits there and breaks down slowly over time, as opposed to a traditional compost pile that you're turning a lot and adding new things into all the time. So what we're hoping for is that the wood will one, provide some filler at the bottom, but then it will slowly break down, adding nutrients at the same time back into the soil and not costing as much. And you can use all kinds of different things, whatever you have on hand that's organic material that will break down. So we're using wood, you can use branches, you can use uh, you know, clippings from your garden, leaves, grass clippings, uh, basically anything that you would put in a compost pile. A couple of things though that you do wanna avoid using as a layer in containers, raised beds and such, uh, gravel and rocks being number one. They just don't break down. So they're not like feeding back the soil. They're not absorbing moisture. They're just kind of messing with the water table from what I understand and what I've experienced in other containers I've used gravel in because I used to do that. And my plants never really did that well because the, usually the bottom layer of soil is the most saturated. And when you have materials that aren't breaking down or absorbing any of that moisture, you're just moving that moisture level up closer to the roots of your plants, which can cause some issues. The other thing you don't want to use is regular garden dirt. It does does not behave the same in containers as it does in the ground. It usually compacts and then messes with drainage. So really the only con I can see to using a layer at the bottom like we are today is soil settling. I think the soil will settle more um, as opposed to if you use 100% raised bed mix. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and keep it topped up. It's something I normally do though when I switch crops out anyway. It's kind of a normal habit for me. So I don't think it'll be too much of an issue. The only pros I can see to using raised bed mix if you happen to have a lot of it on hand is that you do have consistency consistency from top to bottom. You know exactly what's going on in every layer of your container. Usually like your drainage is perfect. Everything works out really well. Uh, but the cons are one cost, unless you have a whole bunch on hand that you want to use. Uh, and then the second thing is it's just not necessary. It's not necessary for the type of crops we're growing in here. Usually in raised beds, it's a seasonal rotation. You know, we're moving things in and out so quickly that our stuff is never really rooting in and needing a huge big reservoir to root into and to draw nutrients from. Okay, I think that's it. So we're going to grab some wood and start filling these things up. That is one gator load of wood, and that got us almost to the bottom of the bricks. That didn't get us as far as I thought it was gonna get us, but I think that's probably fine. We can do the rest with the um, raised bed mix. Because if we only go three bricks up, you know. Yeah, yeah, that'll I, be good. We'll have about a foot in there yeah. of raised bed mix. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's gonna be way better than filling it all the way. My goodness, that's gonna be a slow breakdown. What do you think, maybe like two or three years for that probably. stuff to break down? I've never done it before, but I think yeah. that's the idea is that it won't, it doesn't break down all that quickly. And so it's not like you, it sinks, you know, whereas if you put like mulch and branches and, you know, like smaller things, mm -hmm. that'll break down quicker and it can settle faster. Right. Like leaves compact a lot faster than right. pieces of wood. 
but you could use either one. You just have more sinkage. Okay, one more load of wood. <laughs> We got the wood in the second bed. So now we need to go grab some raised bed mix to fill them the rest of the way. You're doing a great job. Is that tough work, dude? Yes. Yeah, is that hard? Yes. Cheddar has the right idea out there. Cheddar found your coat. Yeah, I see that. They always find the soft surfaces. Okay guys, so this is what we're filling the cold frames up the rest of the way with. This is Espoma Organic Raised Bed Mix. It's got all kinds of goodies. So earthworm castings, mycotone, alfalfa meal, kelp meal, and feather meal. It makes your vegetables look like this. Ooh. Very so delectable. They do look delectable. Tasty. We're gonna go get some plants to put in these cold frames right here, Benjamin, to plant later. Do you wanna help me plant those when we get them? Yeah, um, why is there wood in there? We put a bunch of wood in there so that we didn't have to put as much soil in there. Good idea, huh? Okay, here we go. So a little update, we have both sides filled with raised bed mix. I lightly tamped it down with my hand. I didn't want to compact it too much because that's kind of the opposite of what we want to do with soil like this. But I pushed, I think I pushed it down enough to where it kind of got into some of the cracks. And then I went through with the hose just to kind of clean up the whole framework. I need to do a better job, like you can see kitty paws right here. Um, but I'll do a clean in the very end. But I wanted to mainly water the soil in and I did it twice on both sides pretty heavily to help settle the soil further. So I'm going to give it a little time. We have to go to the garden center anyway to pick up some plants. We may need to add a bag or two more soil on here and then we'll just watch it from there. But looking good so far. And it's kind of the perfect planting depth and honestly perfect depth for anything. Because no matter if you're going to use this to hold over seedlings or whatever, you need to have some kind of platform. I mean, there's no way I could have re reached as far down as it was unless I wanted to store like really tall things. Um, so I needed a platform that I could either set things on or plant in, which is perfect. Plus you have to consider the walkway when this is all said and done will meet the bottom of the bricks. So I'll be standing a few inches higher than I am right now. Oh, I love, love it. Okay, so here's the other side right here. Looking just about the same. This side does look like it settled a little further. It kind of goes down right there. So that's kind of perfect to show those spots where we need a little bit more. We did use 18 bags of raised bed mix per side. I think it would have probably been close to double had we not put wood at the bottom. So, I mean, cutting that in half is pretty darn good. Okay, so now I want to let these beds sit for just a little while. They might settle a little bit more and then we can determine where we need to add more raised bed mix. So in the meantime, we'll head down to the garden center and pick out some plants. I'm going for kind of an early spring garden in here, maybe some greens, cold tolerant things, peas, greens, cabbage. I have cabbage starts in the greenhouse that I planted. Um, and normally I would start with seeds for things like especially lettuce and spinach. But since this is the first time we're planting these beds, I kind of want them to be pretty right in the beginning. I want to see green things in there. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. And I know they have some four packs and things like that down there. And the wind is starting to pick up a bit. And I think things are going to start happening fairly quickly around the Hartley. The stone for the floor should be here in less than two weeks so the floor is going to go in really soon so excited for that because even though we still need to trench for HVAC and you know water and all of that I can start putting stuff in there and that's going to be so exciting and Chad's going to be here probably within the next few weeks to start leveling things out so I really do need to get on getting things transplanted and I I'm getting kind of off subject here so let's head down to the garden center get some plants all right we are here oh I see a cart full of spring crops that's what we're after gourmet salad mix that's really pretty we are out in the nursery to check in the greenhouse as well. Oh yeah, look over here, you guys. Okay, so we've got some Rhapsody lettuce. There's heirloom blend lettuce. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, 
I see a lot of cauliflower and broccoli, which grow a little bit taller than I think that we can put in that space. There's cabbage, which we already have at home. This is kohlrabi though. Yeah, Kosak kohlrabi, we could grow some of that. And then down here, there's more cauliflower, the Romanesco, cheddar, graffiti, and then there are some organ sugar pod peas. Okay, between what the garden center had and what we had in the greenhouse, we've got a gorgeous bunch of things to put in these cold frames. And a lot of these things will get quite a lot larger than what they look like right now. Like for example, cabbage. I mean, if you've ever grown a cabbage plant, oftentimes you have to allow them a few feet <laughs> to mature. We have a couple, let's see, the pixie cabbage is a lot smaller. So I think I'm gonna be mainly focusing on those and then I'll toss in maybe a couple of red acres mm -hmm. for some color. Yes, dude. Um, um, we might have a problem again. What's the problem? The problem, the rocks are covering the dirt again. Oh, are they? And all the dirt is covered by the rock. Is that something you can fix? No, I can't. I only have this shovel. I cannot get rocks stuck because it's a tiny one. Oh, that, well, that makes total sense. Well, there's a lot bigger shovel sitting in the grass. Well, you can use that one. Well, that, can, that cannot work either. That's a, we have a big problem. Uh-oh. That's the big one. Uh-oh. The big one doesn't work for the rocks. Oh, it doesn't? So you need Chad to come here and fix all the rocks out. Okay, Chad, you heard him. It's true, we do need chat, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna get all the rocks so I can dig. Yeah. Okay, back to the plants here. We've got a type of lettuce called Rhapsody, which is a type, if you read the description on the back, I'll read it for you, forms loose heads of crisp, sweet tasting leaves, bolt resistant. So if we don't plant these like in a row, we plant them a little bit further apart, they'll actually head up a little bit, which will take up more space. All of these back here, kind of like the cut and come again type. So we'll be planting those a lot closer. And then I've got a type called Requina, Requina. And this is a type of romaine. Um, so can be harvested for leaves or whole heads. So again, we'll be giving these a little bit more space. And kohlrabi, we wanna space out about 10 inches. So I actually think I'll have leftover to plant in our raised beds over behind the trucks there. And then I've got a few ornamental things. So little daffodils grow like six, well, let's see. This one grows six to nine inches tall. This one's six to 12 inches tall. And then some violas, which are edible. I thought it'd be fun to have a little color in there. I'm gonna lay all of these things out. And then I think we're just gonna get them all in the ground and watered in. all planted. I cannot wait to see what this bed looks like in even one month. I think that the plants are going to grow really quickly, especially if we keep this lid closed and keep some heat in there. But I love the little bunches of spring color. So I just divided everything up based on what I had. So there's five little groupings of spring color in here. Uh, I had five of the minnow daffodils, four of the little yellows, and then five of the violas per bed. So there's one little bunch there, one bunch there, one kind of in the center, and then two more bunches on this side. And then we ended up with five of the pixie cabbage per side, which is perfect. They form little heads, like five to six inch diameter. They mature in 60 days. Um, they're one of the longer things. So the kohlrabi in here is a 65 day. The cabbage is 60 day, but the lettuce is 40 day. So I put the lettuce kind of close to the cabbage, knowing that I'm going to be harvesting that before I harvest the cabbage, allowing the cabbage a little bit more space toward the end of its maturity when it needs it. I also did a quick search on the pixie cabbage 
page just to double check the spacing and it says they only need to be spaced 12 inches. So, I mean, I know on the other varieties of cabbage I've always grown, it's the cabbage in the center, but then the rest of the plant gets so big. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. And then as far as the rest of the plants go, and I hope you can see it, half the bed's shaded right now, but I put the kohlrabi kind of toward the back, spaced out about 10 inches, and then the romaine type of lettuce is the only type I decided to go with, and I put those just kind of dotting the front here. You can see them all the way down to here. Let me show you the other bed. Identical. <laughs> oh, those daffodils and violas look so cute. Love seeing this so much. These kinds of projects just give me life, especially knowing this is the first time of many we get to plant in these cold frames. Oh, love it. I have three different options on how high I want this lid to be. So you can see them right here. So if we go down, let's say to the third option. That right there is kind of perfect for our cooler days so it can trap in some heat but let some air escape so it doesn't get super duper hot in there. I mean I don't want it all the way closed when it's sunny out because it's amazing how much heat they can absorb. But at night for at least the next four or five nights I will have the lids closed because we're going to be in the 20s so hopefully everything will be okay in here. I think they will. And it held off raining, although the wind is start, starting to kick up a bit. In fact, I'm gonna hold off on cleaning the lids. I was going to clean the tops and just make them look nice and fresh and sparkly clean, um, especially to show off the first planting, but we're supposed to have rain later today and tomorrow, so uh, yeah. I don't want to do it today and then have to do it again. And that is it for today's project. I cannot tell you guys how excited I am to have something going in here. Like I'll be able to look out here tonight and tomorrow morning when it's really chilly and know that there's plants all tucked in and cozy in these cold frames just growing and looking pretty. And knowing that, you know, very soon we're going to be really working on this area, making this structure something that we can actually utilize <laughs> is going to be nice after months of winter just looking at it and dreaming and thinking about how we're going to use it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.